happy new year to all my family over here at Anime Back When. I hope everybody had an amazing Christmas, amazing new year, and is ready to knock out some amazing anime this year. And of course, God willing, I'll be here to ensure you guys are blessed with a lot of great titles you probably never heard of along the way. With it being a new year, it's a new me, new channel, and new ideas coming forth. We'll be doing something a little bit different in a new series I'm calling Anime's Beloved. This will be a slot where I do an overview of either an anime title, production company, director, mangaka, or anything else that is crazily beloved in the anime community. What better way to open the first episode with possibly the godfather of anime directors, Hideaki Anno. Perfect timing as he'll be turning 60 in a few months. Anno was born in Ube Yamaguchi, Japan on May 22nd, 1960. What stood out to me about his upbringing is that he struggled with the process of formal education so found himself immersed into comics and oil paintings. This all started as early in junior high school where Anno also was an active member of his school's art club. Constantly dipping out on school and carrying a rebellious state of mind led him to later be labeled a problem child. Transitioning to high school, Hideaki had gotten to the point where he declared traditional education would be a waste of his time and delegated his time and effort into mahjong, astrology, and of course, anime and manga. It was his second year in high school where Anno got his hands on an 8mm movie camera and started putting together live action films and cell shaded animations. And now you could see the inception of what brought him to where he is today. At that time, he even started his own little weak anime production company with his buddies and stuff like that. It's never a surprise to me when anti-studious kids become some of the most successful artists in life because I can absolutely relate to this frame of mind being an artist myself. When Mobile Suit Gundam 0079 came out, Anno was a huge fan. This simultaneously was a period in his life where he really had drawn a line in the sand with his aspirations and his education. He had failed college entrance exams and kind of was sitting around wondering what he was going to do next. After his family applied some pressure on him, he applied to school and got accepted into Osaka School of the Arts in 1980. This is where he would meet and form a friendship with two of the founders of the anime production company Gainax, which of course we'll get into in a little while. Hiroyuki Yamagawa and Tokami Akai alongside Anno and another member of the group who would go on to form Gainax with them ended up putting together an animated production with minimal resources called Daikon 3. This particular experience created a bug inside Anno and a love for the teamwork that goes into putting these kind of things together. Daikon 3 ended up being somewhat of a success and in 1982, Studio New invited Anno to come through and join the production team and work on Super Dimension Fortress Macross as a key animator for the first episode. Now, the success of Daikon 3 and Anno getting a gig at a more established company sounds all gravy, but these three guys were actually in debt and regardless found ways to keep themselves surviving, eventually producing Daikon 4 and working on other projects. Anno ended up getting kicked out of university after a while when all his work took all his available time over it. He used his free time lurking for other work and actually connected with Hayao Miyazaki and got a gig to put together the God's Warrior attack sequence in 1984's Nausicaa, The Valley of the Wind. This particular experience is what truly put a spike into Anno's craft and he saw more recognition in the industry. He went on to do more work throughout the 80s on Irisei Yatsura, an OVA called Birth and some Hentai. And finally, wrapping up the year 1984, the next biggest accomplishment in Anno's career would be co-founding the legendary and iconic Studio Gainax. The dungeon headquarters of early Gainax was an apartment in a Tokyo neighborhood, Toka Danoboba. I hope I didn't mess that up. These guys set out to accomplish one thing in the beginning, compose an animated film. What they ended up doing was putting together a four minute animation which would later evolve into 1987's Royal Space Force Wings of Hanamis. Anno had his hands digging through a lot of production work on that movie. Following the completion of Royal Space Force, regardless how tired he was, Anno didn't stop and found himself doing work on other projects. One that stood out to me being Battle Royal High School in 1987 and I have that actually sitting on my shelf and Nintendo. For Nintendo, he put together a promotional animation for a game called Valis on a Famicom. After this, he came across some work from his partner Yamaga that apparently brought tears to his eyes and that project would later form into Gunbuster in 1988. 
there were some issues preventing that from coming together at that time, and then Anno ended up working on another Ghibli monster, Grave of the Fireflies. He found himself finally entrenching himself into working on Gunbuster after doing some mech designs on Gundam Shars Counterattack. I have yet to see it, and only because I'm hoping one day to stumble on that rare box set that's been out of print for years, but to my knowledge, this one is one of the most important OVAs in anime history. And I could believe it. This was one of the most challenging projects Anno said himself. And it really took his skills to a new plateau afterward. The next big dog Anno would end up doing is putting together one of my personal favorites, Nadia Secret of Blue Water in 1990. During this time, Gainax was going through some power struggles internally and ultimately some terminations ended up being made at the studio. Nadia was a surprise success in a way because it initially was supposed to be 26 episodes and ended up with a 39 episode run after achieving high ratings. The show was a loose adaptation of Jules Verne's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea and was actually something that was an early idea from Miyazaki way back in the 70s. By the way, I have a review for that. Go check it out if you haven't seen it. Not all things were cookies and cream around the show though because this period of time actually set Anno into a depressive state. And you know what comes next. In between that, 1991 saw Otaku no video, Anno would pick up some small hobbies and work on the Sailor Moon R and Macross Plus films in 93 and 4, and Anno ended up going out drinking with a dude he knew named Otsuki. They had a conversation that resulted in Otsuki promising him whatever he brings to the table is guaranteed to be greenlit, and it was on. What came next is 1995's Neon Genesis Evangelion which is definitely Anno's most notable anime, notable work as a whole, and can be interpreted by some as a visual representation of how Anno felt during that period of his life, with the dark ass tone and depressing psychological elements. But that's the beautiful aspect of art. You can literally take your pain and use it to inspire and touch the lives of many people around the world. Eva definitely single-handedly changed the temperature for anime going forward, especially a lot of the anime that came out the rest of the 90s and early 2000s. I got the Evangelion review coming soon, so I won't harp on the show too much. Following Eva was 1998's Kareshi Kanojo no Jiji, aka Kare Kano, aka His and Her Circumstances in North America. And that was a romantic drama which I have a review for, go check it out. The series was actually Gainax's first production to be animated from previous source of written material. It was actually the last TV anime Anno had done since because of issues that he was having. And after that comes the accolades and Anno went on to direct live action films and even doing some cameos in films as well. And then in 2006, he started the production company Studio Kara and would officially resign from Gainax in 07. He'd later go on to do work with Miyazaki again on various short films that were showing at the Ghibli Museum and even voiced the character in 2013's The Wind Arises. The latest work Anno did was 2016 Shin Godzilla, which is just a reboot of the original Godzilla from Toho. So many classics, such rich history, and started possibly one of the most important entries in anime. He lived one hell of a rocky life, and success wasn't guaranteed, but Hedy Akiano had a dream and stuck to it until it finally caught on someday. It inspires me personally, because it's just another example and reminder that you gotta put the work in. It won't happen overnight, and this man grinded his ass off all through the 80s and even started off rocky in the early 90s just for his masterpiece to finally come out in the mid 90s. Let Hedy Akiano be a guide for all of you that if you put your mind to it and never give up, dreams will manifest. Well, that's it. What you think of this episode and who or what should I discuss next? Like the video, comment down below what y'all want to see next. I'm out. Thanks for watching. Anime back when.